No, I was completely fascinated by this uh, loyalty that this pigeon had. So I cried at home and I told my parents, I want a pigeon that will come back to my house. It will stay with me and uh, be loyal to me. We grew up without any pets at all. And I still have a fear for feathered birds. Yeah, I cannot touch it. I cannot go near it. first pair of pigeons, uh, my parents got me uh, two white pigeons. I must have been six or seven years old. To my uh, bad luck, you know, one of them flew away. And my mother told me, uh, no, we have to check with the people from, you know, who sold it because uh, it might have uh, gone back to their house. And that fascinated me. Pigeon is so loyal and went back to their Oh, so they uh, sent somebody and uh, we got some pigeon back. And uh, it was there for a few more days and again it went back. And so I cried at home and I told my parents, I want a pigeon that will come back to my house. It will stay with me and uh, be loyal to me. So. Uh, you know, my, my mother, who knew a little bit about pigeons, she said, no, then we will have to uh, have the pigeons from him. You know, it has to be born here. Hi, I'm Jason. So Edison and I, uh, our classmates from school. So we go back uh, all the way to our high school in uh, 1983. Right now we are having all these birds. We are just taking a small flight, a little exercise every morning. By nature, these birds, if you just leave them, they will be very happy to sit in the loft, uh, breed and go out for the foot is just about a couple of feet. In nature what happens is they would range for the foot, but if we feed them, they will just stay where they are. Great uh, wholesome hobby that uh, Quite a few people uh, can uh, practice. In fact, when I visited the US in uh, 2010, I met uh, uh, a very senior pigeon fancier by the name of Herb Cartmel. And, uh, Herb uh, took me around and introduced me to a lot of pigeon fanciers in the US. And uh, he had started a program uh, for youngsters for uh, uh, children to uh, spend time in nature uh, with the birds by taking the birds and uh, you know, driving out on weekends and uh, tossing them uh, uh, away from home and watching them come back home. So, you know, it kept the children away from uh, video games and uh, a lot of uh, non-physical activity which they were uh, involved in and got them outdoors.
class 10, uh, uh, I gave away all my pigeons to my friends and people who bought them because uh, I found that it was affecting my studies because me and my friends were spending too much time with pigeons. I gave away all the pigeons to focus on my board exams. He was my senior in college, we fell in love with it. He didn't talk about the uh, pigeons at all at that time. Maybe it wasn't on top of his mind, maybe in the back of his mind. He only started after we were pretty much settled into our marriage. You know, I swore to myself that uh, the day I settled down in life, I'd uh, keep pigeons again. True enough, exactly 10 years later, I got my uh, appointment letter. The same day, I uh, went to my uncle's house. He had some pigeons. So I went to his house and I said, give me some baby pigeons. We were well settled into married life and slowly we got a pair of pigeons. He had to convince his mother also, I think, but she's also, she was also into birds and animals. Me, I was totally, totally away from it. We grew up without any pets at all. And I still have a fear for feathered birds. Yeah, I cannot touch it. I cannot, I cannot go near it. There's a big difference between the homing birds and the general birds. So uh, normal pigeons, they can go up to 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers and they'll find them way back home. Uh, the regular birds, if they are taken beyond that 60 or 100 kilometers, then they would not come back. So that's what makes this homing birds completely uh, breed apart. Uh, doesn't matter where they are in the world, even if you took them across the globe, it may take them a couple of years to come back, but they will come back to their home. So that's why they're called the homing pigeons. several centuries, uh, people have been able to find out which are the best skills to uh, you know, come by. So same thing we also continue. So what we try to do is, if you find a bird that has got a lot of stamina and can fly for long hours, but they do not have the speed, then what we would do is we would try to find another bird which is very fast but may not have the endurance. And they are paired and the offspring are able to have the quality of both the endurance as well as the speed. Uh, so we always try to imagine it uh, like in the days of the World War when uh, every aircraft pilot had to carry a homing bird with them in the aircraft. Because anytime the aircraft crashes, they can write a quick note on the coordinates and send the bird which will go back to the base and a rescue party can come and help them out. And uh, we as a group of people try to keep this skill, this breed alive uh, and continue to enhance their skills and ensure that this kind of breed does not go extinct. So basically, I work in Chennai now. I come home on uh, Saturdays and I'm able to spend some time with them. And Monday morning, I'm back from Chennai. Those one and a half days, uh, I should, uh, you know, I have their health, their nutrition, their feeding. So I, you know, I plan everything and uh, uh, mark everything out for uh, uh, an uncle of mine who stays with me. And, you know, he helps me a little bit. And there's a cleaning aid who comes and uh, you know takes care of uh, the cleaning and uh, I spend some time uh, you know, weekends.
the races are always connected once a year usually starting in the month of december and uh, jan feb march because after that in may the weather is very hot and the birds when they are flying from 400 or 500 km sometimes 700 km uh, they will feel thirsty uh, we will be straining the birds so we do not want to strain the birds we just want them to fly and you know uh, enhance their skills of homing distance endurance and all of that so the best time to fly them is during the after the rains so by november we finish all the rains and then the birds are ready so december our racing season starts there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, homing pigeons uh, because they're also called uh, racing pigeons But uh, a lot of people think there's a lot of money involved in this and there's betting and so on. None of it is true. It's uh, just a hobby that uh, many people, uh, not only in uh, uh, Bangalore, but in Chennai, Calcutta, Kerala, many other parts of the world, they uh, engage in uh, this very uh, uh, friendly uh, activity of uh, training their birds uh, come back from great distances and there are there have been cases where uh, birds have been pushed beyond uh, its capacity to fly and i think that's uh, that should not be allowed we have uh, our own uh, club it's called the bangalore one racing pigeon society it uh, has nothing to do with uh, racing. It's a band of people who will come together to train our pigeons. It's a, it's, a, it's a weekend activity that all of us get together and put our birds together and take them to uh, you know, the outskirts of the city and let them go and come back. Pigeons come back uh, home from uh, uh, great distances, bring you so much joy when you see them coming home. So it uh, keeps you alive. Uh, spending an hour with the birds uh, really helps me to focus my thoughts, uh, to clear the plan for the day. And just spending time here is uh, one of the best uh, stress busters. I've ever felt. Every human being should have a passion that they could devote themselves to, something that they would throw themselves into. Give them meaning. Pigeon keeping uh, can uh, really bring you closer to nature. If you're a person who loves freedom, watching the pigeons fly can uh, make you experience the freedom that they're enjoying. And uh, I feel if you like freedom and if you want to get closer to nature, keep pigeons. I think he's quite happy, he found his passion and I'm happy for him to do that. <laughs>